It took a bit more time than planned, but I'm finally here with the Git branches video. In this video, you'll learn what Git branches are, why do you need them, how are they helpful in your development workflow, how to create branches, how to merge a branch into another, what merge conflicts are and how to resolve these merge conflicts. So let's begin. Imagine the scenario you are working on the main branch and you're currently implementing a very big feature. So ideally you will be creating commits along the way, documenting your history just in case something goes wrong, you don't have to undo everything. So let's say you're working on redesigning the theme of your website and you decide to create a commit after updating every single page to stay more organized. In the same project, you have another friend who's working on another big feature of their own. Now, while you were building this feature, you came across a bug that you wanted to resolve right away. So you create another commit that just solves this bug. Now you want to push this bug fix commit to remote to GitHub so that your friend can pull these changes, pull this bug fix commit so that they don't come across the same bug while development. Now the problem here is if you push the main branch to GitHub, all of your commits that were a part of the feature that you are currently building will also be pushed along with this bug fix. This means that only some of the pages will have the new design, whereas some of the pages will have the older design. So what will you do? So one option that you have is to reorder your Git history and move your latest bug fix commit to before all of your feature commits and then push your Git commit history to remote to only your bug fix commit. This is a very complicated process. There must be better ways to solve these types of issues. Well, luckily, here's where branches come in. So branches help you create different versions of your project and work on these different versions in isolation. If you haven't realized it yet, you've been working with a branch already, which is the main branch, also called as the master branch. Go to your terminal and cd into your repository. Now run the command git log, you'll be able to notice that along with the most recent commit, there is a head pointer that points to this main branch. If you don't remember what the head pointer is, the head pointer points to the current working state of your repository. And whenever you use commands such as git checkout, this head pointer is moved to some other commit back in history. And now this head pointer denotes the current working state of your repository, which can be any commit back in the history. Similarly, when you create a new branch, a new pointer is created that points to the current commit you are on. So all of your branches have a name. Your main branch, the name of that branch is main or master. Similarly, when you create a new branch, you'll have to give it a name. So the command that's used to create a branch is git checkout minus p and the branch name. So here I'm going to call my branch dev. So my command becomes git checkout minus b dev. Now what the git checkout minus b command does is it not only creates a branch, but it also switches you from the main branch to the dev branch. So if you try doing git log again, you'll be able to see that now your head pointer points to the dev pointer or the dev branches pointer. Let's say your most recent commits hash is x. Now, as you can see, both your dev and main branches point to this most recent commit, the commit x. And your remote's main branch, which is origin slash main, also points to this commit. Now, in your dev branch, you can create a completely different commit history, a completely different set of commits in your dev branch and a completely different set of commits in your main branch. In this case, let's assume after creating PQR commits, you created a new branch. And in this new branch, you've created three more commits, A, B, C. And at the same time, inside of the main branch, you also created three more commits, X, Y, and Z. So here you can see both the main and the new branch have diverged histories or forked histories. So the history of main branch will look something like this. ZYX RQP, whereas the history of the new branch will look something like this. CBA RQP, where both of these branches have the same commit history up till the R commit. A quick recap on how to create a commit. Create some changes. Add those changes using git add. Check if those changes were added using git status. Now create a commit out of those added changes using git commit minus m. And check if that commit was created or not using git log. After creating this commit in the dev branch, 
Now, if you do get log, you will be able to see that your head pointer still points to the dev branch. But along with your second last commit, you'll be able to see this main text written over here. So this means that the get history up to the main branch is only up to this commit. Now you can go back to your main branch and create another commit to just switch between branches without creating a new branch. You can use the command git checkout branch name. There's another command out there that lets you switch between branches, which is the git switch branch. So git checkout branch name and git switch branch name. Both of them do the same thing. Now that you have switched back to your main branch, create a new commit and check git log. So here's an overview of how the git history of your main branch looks like. Since you're on the main branch, the head pointer points to the main branch. And since you have not pushed this latest commit to GitHub yet, that's why origin slash main still points to a previous commit. Whereas this is the overview of how the git history of your dev branch looks like. So up till commit X, both of their histories are the same. But after commit X, the histories have diverged. So the main branch has a different commit, whereas the dev branch has a different commit. Branches help you work on different features, different bug fixes, experimental features in isolation from the main branch. So if you watched the previous video where I showed you how you can deploy a static website to GitHub pages so that others can easily access your website online. If you remember, you set the main branch that is going to be deployed to GitHub pages. Now imagine the scenario if you are working on experimental features and you're pushing these experimental commits back into main. Now everybody who accesses your website will be able to see this unfinished work live in production, which is something you don't want. So you should be creating a separate branch, creating all of your commits in that branch. And once you're done with that feature, you can merge these commits back into main. So your main branch acts as the source of truth. Now let's take a look at how you can merge a branch into another branch. So since the main branch is your main source of truth where you will be pushing all of your completed features, bug fixes to, we will merge the dev branch into main branch and not the other way around. Sometimes you will also merge the main branch back into your feature branch. For example, in the previous case where you pushed a bug fix commit to the main branch, since your friend is working on another feature in isolation in their own feature branch, they can pull the latest changes from the main branch, which has the bug fix commit into their own feature branch. So to merge a branch, all you have to do is switch to the main branch. To switch branches, you can use git checkout main or git switch main. Now to merge, the command that is used is git merge and branch name. So in this case, it will be git merge dev. After that command finishes, you can view the git history again using git log. And now you will be able to see a special commit with the commit message merge branch dev. Now notice carefully the merge commit or the most recent commit. The hash of this commit is not the same as the hash of your most recent commit of the dev branch. Here, a new merge commit is created. Inside of this git log, you see merge and two commit hashes. So the first commit hash is your second most recent commit of the main branch. And the second commit hash is of the most recent commit of the dev branch. Note that a merge commit may not always be created. In this case, a merge commit was created because main and devs commit history diverged. If you did not add any commit to the main branch and your main branches pointer still pointed to the base of the dev branch. In this case, a merge commit will not be needed and this commit will be as it is merged into the main branch. A merge commit was created in the previous case because that merge commit is a combination of two different newer commits that had to be combined together and created into a new commit. If you're trying out the commands side by side in this video, it is possible that you were not able to merge these two branches and came across something known as a merge conflict. A merge conflict occurs in situation where the changes in the main branch and the changes in the dev branch are conflicting. 
So in simple words, it means that you probably changed the same line of code in both of these branches and now Git cannot identify which change to pick in the final merge commit. For example, if you created a comment on the same line in the main branch and then you created another comment on the same line in the dev branch, now when you try to merge these two, you will come across a merge commit and Git will ask you to pick either of these two lines of code, which change you want to pick. And once you have chosen your changes, only then you can proceed with it. So let's see it in practice. Let's create a new branch now. So to create a new branch, you can use the command git checkout minus B branch name. So here I will create a branch called testing conflicts. So I will use the command git checkout minus B testing conflicts. Now I will create a new comment in this new branch. I've added a new comment over here. And after committing this change, I switch back to my main branch. And I open the same file and on the same line, I added a different comment. Now I'm going to create a comment for this comment. Now I will try to merge testing conflicts into the main branch. So git merge testing conflicts. Now you'll be able to see that the automatic merge has failed and there's a merge conflict. If you are using VS code, you can open this file where the changes were made and you will be able to see that these two changes are being denoted by these decorators over here. The less than equal to sign with the head. So this is your current change, which means that in your current branch, this is the change that you have made. And the branch that you're trying to merge, which is the incoming change, has this change for this particular line of code. Now you can easily pick and choose which one you want to keep or you can keep both of them at the same time too. So all you have to do is remove these decorators and just write the code that you want to be here in your final commit. So VS code allows you to do that. The help of this UI, which is very simple. You can either accept current change. You can click on it and the current change will be finalized or you can click on accept incoming change and the incoming change will be selected and finalized or you can accept both changes. So here, nothing fancy is going on. All that's happening is removing these decorators, which in turn resolves the merge conflict. Now you have resolved the conflict, but you have not created the merge commit yet. So you have to finish committing this to be able to successfully merge the two branches. So you'll be able to see here that your merge is in progress. Now you have made some changes. You need to add these changes into your merge commit. So to add these changes, you can use the git add command. And then to finish merging these two branches, do git merge dash dash continue. And now set the commit message of this merge commit. Now you have successfully merged the two branches after resolving a merge conflict. You can do git log to see a new merge commit was created. Let's do a quick recap of all the things that you have learned in this video. To create a new branch, let's switch to that branch using the same command. You can do git checkout minus b and the branch name. This will create a new branch and then switch you from the current branch to this branch. Now the next command I'm going to show you, I have not mentioned this so far. So this command is git branch and the branch name. So this command just creates a new branch and does not switch you into that branch. To switch from one branch to another, you can use the git checkout branch name or the git switch branch name command. These two do the same exact thing. Now to understand why we have these different commands to do things. Previously, you would only use the git checkout minus B and git checkout commands to switch and create branches to switch between and create branches. But since this git checkout command was being used for doing multiple other things like creating branches, switching branches, switching commits, temporarily viewing commits, a decision was made to introduce new commands to avoid confusion to beginners. I'm not sure if it made newcomers more confused or not, but yeah, there are two different ways to do the same thing for creating a branch and for switching a branch. And then to merge a branch, you have to check out to the destination branch and then use the command git merge and your source branches name. Sometimes you may come across something known as merge conflicts to resolve these conflicts. All you have to do is remove these branch decorators and select your desired change that you want to be there in the merge conflict. 
add these changes to the merge conflict using git add and then continue or finish this merge using git merge dash dash continue. That's the end of this video. In the next video, I am planning to cover the git rebase command. I'll see you in the next one.